coming up to Sea River Export Creek. The sun is just rising there behind us. Hopefully you can see that. How's it guys? Ozone TV episode 2. We are on top of Montague Pass in the garden route. I'm joined by Brigitte Hubert from Weber, South Africa and Jeff Aylev. Well, we can now probably say from Ozone, eh Jeff? I hope so. <laughs> and <laughs> he's our pod podcast master from Ozone. So Brigitte, tell us a bit more about Weber, South Africa. So interesting, Weber is actually from the United States, that's where it started. Um, I'm from Weber, South Africa, and a lot of people would like to say, and I would like to join them when we say, I think South Africans perfected the art of brying, so that's why we're here, and I think that's what we do so well. Um, the nice thing about this is we don't have to always bry meat, so today we're having a little bit of fun. Um, we're doing pizzas or creative wraps. Creative wraps, pizzas, I don't really mind. They're really bloody good. And so good. We, we're really having some fun out here. Jeff, just quickly tell us a bit more. What's, what can we expect next from the Ozone podcast? You've got to swallow that pizza quickly now. The next <laughs> podcast, we're going to be visiting a, a, a little right-hand point break that runs like a steam train. It's called Super Tubes. And we've got some cool interviews coming from Supers. <laughs> our final pizza coming out for this morning or afternoon here on Montague Pass. We get to just see it. It's amazing. <laughs> so, we've got two choices today. Um, we've got pizza and we've got ta -da, chocolate brownie. Check this out. So, <laughs> quite a good space to be at the Montague Pass having chocolate brownies and a fry. How's that? Okay, Brigitte. So we out here, obviously being able to do this so quickly, one of the reasons is gas. So South Africans, you just said that South Africans have perfected the braai, but gas. Let's hear the thoughts there from Weber on, on the gas. Well, charcoal gas is always, it's, they call it the great debate. <laughs> because there's, yeah, I, personally I like gas. Um, I'll talk to you about it now, but you'll realize that there's really pros and cons to each. But why I love it is absolutely, I mean, we've put almost five pizzas in a, in a question of 20 minutes. We've made it and we've almost, it's almost done, guys. Um, so that's the beauty of gas. You can do it. It's so quickly. Um, it cleans easy. Um, that's just on the pizza side. So if we go to meat, um, I mean, the taste where you get if you cook uh, meat on the gas it's just amazing um your wife will be very happy because she <laughs> and the kids will be able to eat fairly quickly it takes eight to ten minutes your bra is ready um for your meat whatever meat you choose um and you okay, can that's have some, that's some valuable points there yeah you can have your dop and she can bra if you like <laughs> um and and yeah the thing for me is i mean i'm a woman so it's, it's not intimidating to cook on gas. Um, okay, so that's true. For, for me personally, cooking on, on charcoal is a bit intimidating. It's definitely, we can do it, but gas is so quickly. So. Oh. And I think, I think the, the beauty, I've had one of these Q series in the back of that uh, Suzu for months now. And it's, the beauty of it, it is literally like we've done just afternoon. You park wherever you want, you pull it out and you make a quick, proper meal um, it's really the the compactability and the travelability of these little units are awesome and they take those little gas gas uh, canisters so they don't need a big canister to be connected and so on yeah i mean that's ju that's just gas in general but don't even get me started on these ones i absolutely love this um, i mean you can if you take if we focus on a family adventure if you are driving for a couple of hours kids are hungry 
dad, mom, we want to eat now. Um, take it out, put a braai broeki, choppy, vorsi, whatever you want. You can put it on and in a question of half an hour, everyone will be eaten. <laughs> well, we, we've just had the most glorious pizza I think ever been had on top of this Montague Pass. Uh, and it was just like literally, like Brigitte says, 20 minutes. But she's got something else cooking and we're going to have a look at that now. In, I don't know if you noticed the... the Chocolate brownies. What I want to tune into now next is a film called The Community uh, or The Mountain Community. And it was a film that we did a, a while back, especially on, on George and the trail running scene in George in the Otaniqua Mountains. Andre Iger came out and he f shot this film and it's something that we were really proud of shooting and Ryan and Kane Riley and Ryan Sands came out to run the Six Peaks Challenge and we got a bit of their interaction with the community and the, here's a little segment of that movie and I encourage you to follow the link, the link should be down in the show notes or on top here somewhere, uh, follow that link and watch the full film, it's a really nice piece of trail running out here in the Otaniqua Mountains. Guys, brownie has just come out of it. I can smell it. Just came out of the Weber Q1200, and we are about to have it. Jeff, I feel like a naughty boy gonna have brownie. Boys, you are welcome. It smells so good. I'm gonna have that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, while we're having this delicious brownie, I'm gonna take a bite. Who gets mm. the brownie points today now? Mm. Mm. Really good. Really good. Well done. Well done. You're welcome. This warm. <laughs> Thank on you. On top Weber. of the pause. Thanks, Weber. You swallow that. Jeff, tell us a bit more about J Bay last year and what we can expect from the latest podcast. J Bay last year was um, a really epic contest, both the men's and the ladies. But I was actually contracted to a magazine uh, to go and do a story on the Brazilians. Uh, the previous year I'd covered individual surfers. I did a story on Kelly Slater and Steph Gilmore. And this year we made the call to cover the Brazilians because they obviously uh, have got a huge influence on the world tour at the moment with Medina was the world champion then. And so I figured they were going to do well. And um, I went and met a number of the, um, the officials. I spoke to Strider, who's on the, the uh, commentary team. Uh, I spoke to Sal Masikela, uh, who's very, very influential and very involved with surfing. Um, and a number of, uh, obviously a number of the surfers, Adriano de Souza, who was the man who really got Brazil first entrenched in, in the WSL. He was the first big name Brazilian. And for, luckily for me, as uh, it turned out to be an all-Brazilian final, Gabriel Medina up against Italo Ferreira. And um, it, was, um, it was Medina who would win the final. And ironically, Italo would go on to become world champion. But for sure. my story, the Brazilians turned out in the final. And Perfect. it turned out that Gabriel won. And he was really had been my focus point for the week. So it was, it was nice. And uh, the, bear in mind, when you're listening to the podcast, as those were not recorded originally as podcasts, they were recorded just for me to have a background to write. 
So what I'm saying is that I was pretty much asking the same questions to every person. So it's a bit repetitive, but it's interesting to hear their points of view. Very cool. Guys, go and get that podcast. It's the Ozone Podcast, iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, Google Podcasts. It's everywhere. Just go and subscribe. Get that latest podcast on the WSL and Jeff's insights from those surfers out there. Really good show. Okay, guys. So that brings us to the end of our show today. Brigitte, thank you very much for joining me up here thank on the so Montague Pass. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks. Cool. Wherever South Africa, give us the last thing that people should take in mind. Guys, whether you do a pizza, a steak, borshi, whatever, just create memories out around the bra. That's what we want to see and that's what we enjoy. So, yeah. Definitely some memories created today on Montague Pass with these Webers. Guys, go get your cube rise. They're on the www.weber.co.za. All technical specs, pricing, everything you need right there. Pack them into your bucky, into your car, onto your next adventure. We're ending off the show with some visuals from a little snow climb. Mates and I did with when the first cold front hit the southern part of South Africa. And it was really fun out there. So here's some visuals from that. Cheers. Till next time. Cheers, guys. Thanks. So, there's the road where we came from. Beautiful windstorm morning out to play in the snow. I've got two bearded mates here. Hey, hey! <laughs> Woohoo! Right, so, so things are starting to get real, yeah? And now. Our birds has just gone, we can't see anything, just missed. Probably gonna get some snow falling soon and we getting closer to the top. Okay, it's too cold down up at the beacon but we're close enough to the peak. Cheers, we made it. Ah, and now where we're standing now, it's wind still. Absolutely stunning, stunning views. I think between the lots of us, we've been taking about a hundred pictures by now. Just the other side. Andre? <sighs> Gonna try my luck at that. Look, look, okay, here I go. <laughs> oh, that's a lot faster than what it should have been. <laughs> Epic playing uh, in some fresh powder now. Andre and I have done some fair bits of bum slides. Sun is coming out full now. Clouds are done. And it's an epic morning. Ha ha ha!